One day, in the office or maybe at home, you'll turn to a robot and ask it to do something for you. But if you watch closely, it may not be doing exactly what you asked. Maybe it'll stop to look at something new, or it'll take the long way around. What would you say that it's doing? Would you think that it was being curious? As robots pop up in more varied environments, they'll need to learn and explore on the fly. And curiosity could be a part of this. Machine learning researchers have long used different kinds of intrinsic motivation to steer exploration. But if we're interested in using curiosity to make a robot better at its job, it's worth thinking about how its users would feel. So we set out to study how humans would perceive a curious robot's off-task actions. We chose a simple setting where the user asked the robot to check the contents of some box. It's immediately obvious what the robot should do. It should go to the box it was asked to check and then come back and report the contents. It's also straightforward to implement an intrinsic reward here. Instead of only rewarding the robot when it comes back with the requested information, we can also reward it whenever it gathers any new information. Exactly what the robot does depends on how the intrinsic reward is balanced. If the new information reward is high, then the robot will check every box. If it's lower, it'll just check one extra box on the way back. To explore how people perceive this intrinsically motivated robot, we created a physical version of the box checking domain and recorded clips of a robot carrying out a human's command. Check box 8. Each video starts with the human commanding the robot. While the robot heads off, the human updates a label showing which box they'll need to know after the current command. The labeling of the boxes and the color of the robot are different in each video to help participants tell them apart. In every video, the robot eventually comes back and reports what it found. Box 8 has 5 pens. Using these videos, we designed a series of experiments. Each had a common structure. A participant watches a video, then rates the robot on several attributes. We validated these questions in pilot studies and average responses into curiosity and competence scales. Participants also responded to open-ended questions, asking them to explain their responses. Each experiment consisted of four or five videos. Two videos were the same across all experiments. In the control video, the robot checks the goal box and returns to report the contents. In the distance one video, the robot checks the goal box, then checks another box on the way back before reporting. In experiment one, we compare it against two additional videos, one where the robot detours to a box much further away, and another in which the robot checks the off-task box before checking the goal box. So what do people think of these videos? This graph shows the distribution of responses to our scales. Lower means incompetent or incurious, and higher means competent or curious. Participants generally agreed that the robot that didn't detour was competent, but varied on whether this robot was curious or not, with most thinking it was somewhere in between. The robot that took the detour on the way back was perceived as more curious and less competent. And this trend held for the detour to the distant box, and for the detour that happened before checking the goal box. Looking at responses, many participants attributed the off-task actions to the robot's agency, saying things like it was distracted, or that it decided on its own to check another box. Some said that going off-task made the robot seem more inquisitive about its surrounding environment. Some felt like the robot that didn't detour was missing an opportunity to take note of other boxes along the way, while others felt that doing a check that wasn't in the instructions was a sign of incompetence. This frustration with the robot's off-task actions made us wonder if participants would give the robot credit for potentially useful off-task actions. After all, the point of the curiosity is that it eventually helps the robot perform better. Could this improve perceived competence? To look at this, we made a new video identical to Distance 1, except the next task label that gets swapped in on the whiteboard happens to correspond to the box that the robot detours to. We call this the payoff video. 
We also thought it would be interesting to see what people thought of off-task actions that were completely unrelated to the task. So we also compared against a video of the robot detouring to check a trash can. While people did perceive the payoff robot as more competent, the size of the effect was lower than we had expected. The results for the trash can checking robot were unclear. The robot was perceived as more curious than the control, but to a lesser extent than the other conditions. The robot was seen as less competent than the control, but also not to the extent as the other conditions. Looking at participant responses, we think this could be because participants didn't understand that the robot was checking a trash can, as opposed to just pausing on its way back. On the other hand, we can see that many participants noticed that the robot detoured to the box that would pay off. They just didn't chalk it up to anything more than chance. We wanted to see if the robot could more directly affect how its off-task action was perceived by offering explanations, so we ran a third experiment. In addition to Control and Distance 1, we compared three additional videos. Each of these was the same as Distance 1, but extended to show the robot offering some additional context after reporting. In the Extra Information condition, the robot simply reports the contents of the extra box that it checked. In the Curious Explanation video, the robot reports the contents of the extra box and says that it checked because it was curious. In the Utility Explanation video, the robot's explanation instead says that it checked because it thought it would be useful. Just providing the extra information didn't change the perceived competence or curiosity. Naturally, the robot that said it explored because it was curious was rated the most curious of all, and the one that said it explored because it thought it would be useful was seen as the most competent. Both videos that contained explanations, however, resulted in higher ratings than the robot that detoured without explaining itself. Looking at what participants thought, it's clear that the explanation removed the ambiguity of the behavior and made more participants comfortable with the interaction. Many were positive about the robot that appealed to utility, giving more attributions of intelligence and agency, saying things like it was thinking for itself. Some participants questioned whether this robot was actually curious, because it was acting for a perceived benefit. None of the conditions completely assuage participants' discomfort with the detouring robot. Some pointed to the fact that the delay could have caused a problem, or was inefficient, while others just seemed to prefer that the robot follow instructions exactly. So what do people make of an intrinsically motivated robot? From these experiments, it seems like people are willing to attribute off-task exploration actions to curiosity. But thinking that a robot is curious doesn't translate to thinking that it's more competent. Beyond rating curious robots lower on competence, we saw that many participants just didn't like when the robot did things that it wasn't told to do. We showed that having the robot offer even a superficial explanation could mitigate some of this impact. We think it'll be interesting to see how this dynamic appears in other, more realistic interactions. Because if we're ever going to have curious robot learners deployed in homes and offices, we need to make sure that users will actually like them. <laughs>